Hey, it's me, Tim, and I recently published a video about this clear acrylic guitar that I made, and a lot of astute viewers noticed that I forgot something. I forgot to put pickups on it. I didn't really forget. It was a joke. The other thing some people sort of suggested is a, a piezo pickup in the bridge, which is a, a great option. There's all sorts of amazing products out there, but I particularly don't care for the sound of piezo pickups on pretty much anything. <laughs> and a lot of people kind of notice this slot that I had here and they're like, oh, I bet he's gonna do some kind of floating pickup. And that is exactly what we're about to do today. Uh, I'm gonna put a floating pickup that can move. And I have a couple ideas that I'm gonna chase down. So the first thing I was doing was I was completely over engineering and I was thinking about springs and pulleys and levers and all this, you know, crazy stuff. And then I realized that, well, you know what? It actually doesn't have to be that complicated. And we're gonna do a really, really simple version today and then talk about how that could be uh, applied to maybe more conventional looking guitars and less sort of silly looking as what I'm about to do is probably gonna look. And this is all a prelude to some other ideas and some other things that I'm thinking about. So hey, let's go over to the purple rug and I'll show you. Come on. I gotta do everything. So the idea is simple. Uh, a lot of more complicated floating moving pickup designs have like a a piece of like a slide inside of it, like usually from like a drawer or some other hardware. Um, but I was thinking about it and I don't think you really need all that. If we have this pickup here, and I wanna move it from there to there, all we need to do is have two rails that hold it in place. For example, now available at squaretools.com. There are two rails here. And then you just push the pickup in between them, right? Obviously on most guitars having Big metal rails on the top would be ugly, but we have this advantage of doing this aquatic theme and I'm working with acrylic. And so I came up with this idea, waves. I have this somewhat flexible eighth inch blue tinted acrylic that I have, it's like eco epoxy. So there's our, our rail system. The other thing we have to worry about is wires. And so I was thinking about all sorts of like, you know, putting like um, metal connectors in here. So the positive terminals on one end and the negatives on the other. And so it's always in contact with blah, blah, blah. And all we really have to do is just provide space for the wire to bunch up. So if we have a wire going through this hole, we just have this slot. So if it's here, it's there. And if it's there, it's there. The wire can bunch up in the slot. No harm, no foul. Doesn't have to be complicated. Great, so we've got that figured out, we've got that figured out. Now we need to figure out the look of the pickup. Obviously, I want to stick with this clear acrylic and this aquatic theme. One of the things that some commenters mentioned, and I was thinking about too, is that there is a particular style of pickup used on like jazz guitars. They call it like a, a submarine pickup. I was thinking about the concept of making my own. Problem is, is that if it was, it would look like the submarine sinking, like in order for it to be able to make something small, in order to make it big enough to where I could have the submarine in the proper direction it was getting a little bit huge, and so I was messing around with that idea. I wasn't liking it. And I was thinking about maybe um, like, you know, angelfish. I thought it might be cool because I could put the pickup poles in this sort of wrap. And then um, I was thinking about maybe doing something like a scuba diver. Uh, and then this bar, this, this rectangle represents the, you see it starts getting a little bit too big and a little bit too silly. And so what I decided on instead, a picture of the scuba diver that I could put into a regular pickup shape. I drew some files to cut on my laser and rooted through all my little cutoffs of plexiglass. I like doing projects like this with little pieces of cutoffs. I feel better about myself and that's why I saved them all. It's kind of like using reclaimed, you know, these are all pieces that were just left over from other projects and so it gave me the opportunity to experiment with some feeds and speeds and depths and stuff as I uh, cut some parts and uh, glued them together and uh, don't feel too too bad about it if I screw something up in the process. I forgot to drill a hole to hold my wire, so I used my center square, I found the center, did that the old fashioned way. This is like a kind of low pull refrigerator magnet, and I'm sort of modeling these pickups after the very popular gold foil pickups that were on the old Harmonies back in the day and some of the, the Japanese stuff. These are uh, were made sort of inexpensively, but they have this really kind of unique sound. There's obviously a lot of gold foil elements missing, but I'm sort of mimicking them with the pickup wire and the magnet in the middle. Uh, and then what I need to do is I have to, you know, wire my leads on, and I thought I would just put a little bit of copper tape on the plastic, and I did some experiments uh, with doing this and soldering to the copper, and it all worked well, it sort of melted into the plastic, but I didn't give myself enough room to really do it nicely. My neat little copper patches didn't hold and I had a tough time getting that one side, but I've got resistance now at 5.44. I 
but it did come up there a little bit and it's floating and I'm afraid to mess around with it too much. So I want to secure it all so it can slide as well as, you know, not come apart. I'm going to glob up some epoxy on it right now. I was afraid to poke around in there and, and accidentally break my leads, so I just covered them all with epoxy. Well, I've already decided I'm going to make another one because uh, this epoxy looks pretty cruddy, and I know I can do better with this graphic too. So, uh, But before I do that, I'm going to proceed with this one to see what other problems I might run into, and, uh, and then I'll have better information to make the final one. I specifically chose some nice green and white wire to match my fingerboard, so when I snake it through and you see it, it'll look pretty. I want to have enough tension on this pickup so it won't move around while you're playing, but it should also slide easily. Uh, for this instrument, I thought we'd put some water, and I'm using this sort of eco acrylic. It's like these drops that I have, and it's got a little bit more flex in it than maybe regular acrylic, so um, I think I can just screw that down right there. Everything I wanted to happen here worked according to plan, but I started to see some ways I could improve upon it already, too. I just have it loosely wired in here now, and um, you hear it. It's pretty low output. I think it's a little further from the strings than I thought it was going to be, so I could actually make it a little bit taller, and um, which is cool because that makes it a lot easier for me to get more winds on and get more power. Um, and, you know, I don't know, I could maybe experiment with using different magnets, but it's kind of interesting that there's some there's sweet spots for sure, right there. And it sort of disappears here. And sort of... That's where it wants to be, like... So I can make a thicker bottom, maybe. So I, I have enough height to where I can add a whole other layer of this acrylic, which I can add to the base, which will make it easier to create a system for soldering that all together and make it look nicer. Back to the drawing board. Here's the original files that I was working with, um, the diver is somewhere else. I design everything in Vectric, um, which I can run my CNC with directly, but then I can also just export these to use them with my laser. This is everything I had originally. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create that second base plate, and I'm going to use that to give me the opportunity to manage this wiring a little bit cleaner and easier. Okay, so now here's the idea. I changed the shape of the bottom just a little bit. Um, and we'll do our same stack, put our magnets in there, put the lid on, and we wind it the same way. But now this time when we wind it, we can run our positive and our negative through these holes to the back. And we can solder them onto the back here, right down the center where the second back plate will go. So all the soldering will happen in this space and our wires will be secured down there. We can add a little bit of epoxy tie them in a knot or whatever and then run them through this last piece here that will go right over the top wires go through there and this fits right into the channel in the middle of the guitar to act like a track while I was at it I made one with a neodymium magnet in the middle I was doing some experiments with the original one and um, I think that's going to be okay. So why not? Like, obviously I don't plan on making millions of scuba diver pickups out of acrylic that float on clear guitars, but, you know, the principles here are a good learning experience. So I'll make them both and see what they sound like next to each other. Back to the winding board. Now I was able to get my full 5,000 winds that I wanted uh, with that extra width on the bobbin. The last one, or the first one rather, I could only reach 4270 before I was getting in the way of my uh, soldering positions. Now I was able to stick my copper shielding tape on the back and do my soldering there and then just sort of melt it into the plastic just a little bit before putting all my back pieces on with just acrylic glue. And it all went together pretty well. Well, except for one thing. Well, my, my clamps are a little bit too strong for what I need to do, but you can't really see it from this side, so...
we'll just keep moving. <laughs> Maybe this time we'll use a little less clamping pressure. <laughs> Normally I would pot these with melted wax because it's a lot more environmentally friendly and just sort of nicer and better, but um, I want to keep this acrylic looking kind of clear, so I'm going to spray some lacquer around, uh, trying to keep the tops uh, nice and just sort of get a little lacquer on those wires. By just sort of spraying that sloppy coat of lacquer on this clear thing, it actually sort of added to that bubbly look. Um, it looks almost like it's underwater. I kind of like it. It's a happy accident. First, let's just check our resistance just for just so we know, and we can see that the neodymium one is reading at about six right now. And let's see what this refrigerator magnet looks like. Six point five. Right there again, that's the magic spot. All right, let's compare that right away to this other one. So this one So when you get back here to the treble side on this one with the lighter magnets it gets real quiet. And you get up here Interesting, huh? But this we'll just go with the neodymium one cuz that one sounds better and worked everywhere. Oh. That one's way better. I'm really not an expert at, well, anything, especially this, but um, I think that the strings don't vibrate quite as much at the bridge. They're a little bit tighter there, and so maybe that lighter pull magnet wasn't really hearing what it needed to hear. All right, my tube amp is still at the shop, but we'll give this a try with my little practice amp that I have here. Kind of a fun flanger effect like that. I'm gonna get a big chord. <laughs> I wish I had my real amp here to hear that. It's uh, getting repaired. But even just through this little cruddy amp, I thought it sounded pretty good. It was very crispy. I've always liked the sounds of electronics with like a pickup straight in without any junk in the way, like no knobs or capacitors, you know? So it has that really sort of hot, vibrant sound like that. Um, and I think that the, the 
extra strong neodymium magnet being pretty close to the strings probably helps that. So yeah, there's like, it was like alive. It was a lot more alive in my hands than I thought it would be, especially after my first test one where I used those sort of refrigerator magnets where it was, um, you know, felt like you were working a little, a little harder, but yeah, it was, um, felt like very, very alive. You know what I mean? I'm experimenting with a couple different things here on this guitar. One, of course, is materials, which I continue to always experiment with. The other is the floating pickup, which is uh, not even really the thing that I was most interested in playing with here today. But you can see how simple it is. And obviously, most guitars wouldn't work this way, and you might not want to just mount stuff on top of it. But all it is is this channel. The little key actually helps. You can slide it up and down. It stays. It doesn't move anywhere. Just the slight pressure of that plastic pushing down on it is all it needs. So now imagine, if you will, that all of that was happening in a cavity on a guitar underneath the pickguard. So basically, you have a pickguard, and then you have a, a slot that your pickup goes in that's mounted to another piece of pickguard material. When you screw it all down, just that pressure alone is gonna be enough to hold that pickup in place. And it can all be hidden underneath this pickguard with this spot. And then an added bonus, if you had your wires going to a normal cavity location here, you would have your wire just be right, drill through a hole in the middle there. So you'd have to even have less worry about wire length. You wouldn't have to reach as far, right? You'd be starting right in the middle. You only have to go to there, to there, and then that's it. Be wicked easy to do. So I don't think that it's that complicated. However, does it add value to your instrument? Probably not. I think your instrument's gonna be better served just having two pickups on it anyways, but it's fun, it's a gimmick. I may mess around with the floating pickups some more and actually do a guitar like I was describing with the pick guards and having it look more traditional just, just for the fun of it. I wouldn't mind seeing it come together. Um, but like I said, I don't, I don't think it's all that hard. I don't think you need all this fancy hardware. And believe me, I had fancy hardware ideas. I mean, we're talking sliders, tracks, magnets, springs. I thought about it all, but completely unnecessary. But what I was more interested in was this design of a top-mounted pickup for some other guitars I have coming up and uh, some other pickup designs I'm working on. So stay tuned for that. Coming soon. All right, thanks a lot and be good.